So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here. Today, three questions, uh, three technical questions uh, that I would like uh, to respond to. And uh, I'm going to first read out the question as always. Uh, then I will explain the questions because uh, some of them are indeed a little bit more advanced. And then um, I'll give you my answer. And uh, of course, uh, thank you very much for sending those questions. So you have a nice YouTube channel and creating very informative content by sharing information which otherwise would be very difficult to access. So keep it up. However, the more I watch and the more I read, the new questions I'm getting. And uh, I wanted to ask a few which I have in my head right now. Question one, you have a video where you're showing that phase contrast objectives can still be used for bright field microscopy and still get quite good results. But how about strain free objectives? Can those be used for the bright field microscope without significant image quality loss? Also, how, um, what about other types of specialized objectives? Can those be used in bright, bright field microscopy? Well, yes, uh, it, the, th the thing is the following. There are certain um, objectives, in this case, as mentioned, so-called phase contrast objectives that can be used in bright field as well. Bright field, that is the regular um, uh, microscopic technique. However, there is a small loss in image quality, sometimes so small that you actually need a side-by-side -side comparison to see the image quality loss. And the reason is, is because phase contrast objectives, they have a so-called a phase ring um, on the lens and uh, this phase ring yeah, is uh, also reducing the image quality a little bit if you use this phase contrast objective um, in bright field. Um, so in this case, there is a quality loss. Now, what about other objectives like so-called strain-free objectives? These are objectives that are used uh, every time when you are using polarized light. Um, when you manufacture microscope objectives, uh, then during the cooling process of the lenses, because they're glass elements, so they're molten glass, and when they cool, um, if they cool in an irregular way, then there can be strains or tensions inside the lens elements. And um, those uh, strains, uh, they can change the direction of the polarized light. Um, so in other words, uh, you have to use, uh, every time when you use polarized light, you should use strain-free objectives. Um, and uh, of course, uh, they can be used also in bright field uh, because uh, yeah, they're just uh, better than what's, what's, what's necessary for bright field. Because in bright field, you're not working with polarized light. Um, so of course, uh, this can be used. And I have to tell you, I'm not quite aware of any other otherwise specialized objectives because other objectives like plan objectives or uh, special immersion objectives, yeah, of course, they can all use the, in, in a variety of different uh, microscopic techniques um, as well. So, um, yeah, that's not specific. So, short answer, um, strain-free objectives, if you want to get those, yeah, expensive um, and you might not benefit unless you're using polarized light. So, let's now uh, move on uh, to uh, the next uh, question here, question number two. Um, on eBay, there are quite a lot of microscopes which are missing some parts. So I wonder if it is possible to make some kind of a Frankenstein microscopes um, or only by those parts which are mentioned in the official documentation can be used. Um, at first glance, it looks that, like that physically and some other parts should fit, but it's not only about fitting physically, it's all about prop properly functioning later on. Yes, um, and the answer is a clear, it depends. Um, it is correct that uh, unfortunately um, on eBay uh, there are many microscopes uh, that um, are missing certain parts and uh, either because uh, um, they were already sold off uh, or it could be that on eBay that you get uh, specialized microscopes that only have those certain parts that are actually only needed for a specific purpose. In any case you want to assemble yourself a complete microscope using used parts. And it is important, or my general recommendation, if you want to do that, then stick to the brand and the model of the microscope. I just want to give you an example. Um, if you are interested in Zeiss microscopes, there are many people out there that like to put together their own Zeiss standard. That's the name of the microscope, the Zeiss standard, um, which is a yeah, very well uh, known microscope uh, with a highly modular and uh, with a lot of parts. And you can buy those parts together um, and uh, you have, there's the document documentation is available, that they fit, uh, and then you can put your microscope together. And I will tell you, it's not going to be cheap either. Or for example, uh, the Olympus uh, BH uh, series microscopes, um, very popular. So if you buy yourself uh, eyepieces um, uh, yeah, and, and the like um, from this uh, microscope uh, series, then they will fit. 
Now, it is also like this that sometimes um, you want uh, to probably upgrade a microscope with more modern parts. Um, you've got to be careful here, uh, again, what they are. You cannot simply um, take and exchange, let's say, an Olymp Olympus uh, condenser system and put it on, a, on I don't know, a, maybe a, a Zeiss or Nikon system. It doesn't work. Okay, so you have to stay within the model. Um, however, there are um, yeah, some borderline cases. For example, this is the 160 millimeter system of Olympus, and I can, of course, take out the objectives and I can add modern 160 millimeter objectives as well. And um, I can also add uh, modern eyepieces if I want to, and physically they will fit. However, um, those systems here that are from the same series, especially if they belong to the traditional uh, brands, so called they are so called compensating and this basically means that um, if there are any uh, lens errors aberration errors then they will be corrected um, by the eyepieces or up here it's, i'm going to show you here this is a, f a photo projection eyepiece for the projection ocular it's also an, a compensating one which means that it also corrects the lens errors so while you're able to physically fit uh, some of those um, yeah, uh, objectives and eyepieces, you, you might not get the best image quality. Okay, so that's simply something that I wanted to say. And very often, um, those, the eyepieces, the traditional ones that you, you get, uh, yeah, um, sometimes also pretty good in, in quality. Uh, but it, then again, it depends on the specific, uh, on the specific, uh, um, yeah, make and model. So just, uh, to sh tell you, um, you can generally uh, be a little bit more flexible in exchanging um, eyepieces and objectives uh, because uh, they belong to the same uh, 160 millimeter DIN standard. Um, if you now want to uh, experiment around with infinity optics, they're not going to fit uh, in this case. Um, they might fit physically, but then it, the optics are definitely not going to work. It's not only bad image quality, but it's uh, completely blurry. If you put um, an infinity objective um, on a, a traditional 160 millimeter microscope, Yes, some, some of them actually do physically fit, um, but optically it's not going to work. Um, you've got all different, um, all different uh, possibilities here. And uh, I would say that there, in general, answer is very difficult uh, to give. But um, if you um, are getting involved into putting microscopes together out of used parts, go ahead, please do that and learn on in the process. Okay, uh, that is simply something that I would like to recommend. Um, however, if you want uh, to place a focus on uh, observing nature and uh, doing actual practical microscopy work, um, I probably think that it might be a lot of uh, initial, a lot of initial energy has to be invested in order to get a functioning microscope together. And the question is, is, is this where your interest is? Okay, so um, I would not uh, make the basis decision now on cost factors alone, um, but also on, on interest factors. If you want to learn a little bit with high microscope hardware um, and uh, putting microscopes together, then go the eBay way. If you're probably more interested in nature observation, um, yeah, then I think the easiest or shortest route to that is, is um, buying a finished microscope out of the box. Okay, so now to the last question. So question three is about connecting a camera to a microscope. I found quite a good article on how to do that. I've also watched your videos on YouTube and still missing one point which option provides the best results. I guess uh, that in the article described direct connection method is equivalent to your 3D printed connector. Um, if this method is so good or why manufacturers are making those long tubes like the Olympus adapter L, or do you still think that the option with tubes and eyepieces provides better results? Okay, well, again, a long question here. So the thing is the following, what's the best way of connecting a, a camera to a, a microscope? And here again, you have to ask, what, what do you mean with best? Uh, best image quality, uh, most convenience, lowest cost? Do you want to do video? There are so many other um, side questions attached to that that it's a little bit uh, yeah, difficult to give a general answer. And that's why there are so many different uh, solutions available because different people place uh, different emphasis on different things. However, more specifically to this question, the question is, is now, is it not possible to directly connect a camera over here um, on the photo tube so that the objective down here directly creates a picture in the camera? No other optics in between. And indeed the answer is, is yes. Uh, this is called direct projection. And indeed, uh, this is what the question refers to. I've made a 3D printed adapter for one of my microscopes uh, from my other microscopes. Now, if this is possible, then, and that's not an actual question, why, why bother? Why bother with such a system on top? Okay, why, why so big? You have, yeah, an adapter over here. There is a, yeah, a photo projection eyepiece, which I showed you uh, shortly um, ago. Okay, then you need another tube over here. Okay, everything has to be uh, tightened. 
and then um, you put the camera on top here. Okay, look at, by the way, I've got a second one over here. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a lot of metal, okay, and very bulky. Why is that? And well, we have to go back a little bit in history in order to understand this before the time of digital cameras. The reason is, is it's because at that time there were so called full format cameras, 36 millimeter cameras, and the film uh, was around, yeah, one picture was about this size, okay. And uh, they also had other film cameras with six by six centimeter film. Okay, it's uh, yeah, the medium format cameras, they called them, the Hasselblads and, and so on. Um, and this was a large film size, gave a very high resolution, very good image quality. But how are you going to fit a camera with such a large film um, on, on here? The problem is, if you were to put the camera with such a large film um, on here, it would not be able to, uh, the picture would not be able to illuminate and cover uh, the whole film. Okay, so that is the problem. And the image, where is the image created? The uh, objective creates the image approximately one centimeter down into the tube. So that I have, I'd have to put the sensor um, of the camera, or the film in that case, I'd have to put the film on, of the camera um, approximately in here. So the camera would have been very low. Somehow this would have been possible. Sure, you kind of make everything shorter and redesign the microscope. But you see, see the problem still remains. You would not be able to fill the whole film with a microscopic image. Okay, and for this reason, to kind of resize, to resize uh, the the image to fit the film, for this reason, um, they needed uh, to have those adapters. And for the different film cameras, for the yeah 36 millimeter and for the six centimeter film cameras, that yeah, you had a different uh, photo projection ocular. Yeah, so there are different magnifications optimized for different film sizes. Yeah, so and this uh, is uh, now basically the one that is used for full format film camera. Yeah, so um, and uh, then basically this goes on top here, and then at the top um, you have different types of adapters to fit different uh, types of cameras. So this is basically the, the answer here. Now, what is my criticism generally nowadays on on on, on modern microscopes? Um, you see. All you have to do is, is you have to design a microscope that where there is a tube, you don't even need an eyepiece or an, or an ocular. All you need is, is some kind of a tube out of aluminum uh, that which you can put on the photo tube at the correct distance where you can directly connect a DSLR camera. This is a so-called a T2 ring, the standard ring which is used in astronomy and also in microscopy a lot. You can make an adapter and then you have a camera specific T2 adapter ring and then you can basically use direct projection um, from the objective onto the camera sensor. It would be extremely cheap, it would be practical, it would be small in size, they don't make it. And I have no idea why. And for this is the reason why some time ago I 3D printed one for my Swift Stellar uh, One Microscope. Uh, link uh, is in the description below. You can, can watch that. Um, but I just want to say, tell to you, yeah, say to you that is uh, essentially the reason why those existed. And I think it is not necessary anymore to have those uh, provided that the microscopes are and the adapters are designed in an appropriate way. And these days the digital cameras, they have a small sensor anyway. Um, so, and for this reason, because of the small sensor of the digital cameras, even of the digital SLR cameras, it is possible to actually uh, put uh, those cameras directly um, on, on here uh, without any intermediate optics. These days it's possible, but for whatever reason, nobody ever got the idea to do that. Okay, so, um, and uh, there is there are even some uh, concluding comments over here that I would like uh, to read to you. So that's it for now. And those questions have two purposes, not to spend too much and not to spend too little. I think that sometimes it's better to spend a little more and get a product of good quality. But um, you're constantly mentioning microscope lifespan is quite long. So why not investigate sec in the second hand market? Just the problem with the second hand that in many cases microscopes are specialized and it's difficult to say if it can be used for the bright field microscopy. Also some parts might be missing and it's unclear if those parts are easily obtained for reasonable price. Thank you in advance for your answer if you are able to answer it. Thank you for your question and I think um, I agree with all of these points here. Um, sometimes uh, the second hand way is indeed the more complicated way. Um, you learn also a lot more um, and generally um, I think uh, the point is, is you have to define a little bit yourself of where your main interests are. You're more interested in maybe in the microscope hardware and putting together the system, tinkering around a little bit, being maybe a little bit more patient until you find all of the parts and learn a lot in that process um, or is your focus more um, on yeah, nature observation as such um, or maybe both. Maybe then you have uh, two different microscopes. <laughs> okay.
I wish you all the best. Uh, happy microbe hunting as always. And of course, Merry Christmas. Uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.